Hi, my name's Anthony, and today I've just put a tray of Brussels sprouts into the oven, which is not relevant apart from the fact that I burnt my finger. Uh, so while the pain subsides, I thought I'd just do a quick video about how to get a bit more help within the Nuke environment. So we're going to run through a few things that hopefully will make your uh, self-discovery kind of exploration a little bit easier. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the Python script editor. So the Python script editor is actually surprisingly cool, but there's a few things, or at least one thing I think you should probably turn on by default. So let me demonstrate. I've selected a bunch of nodes, oops, and deselected them. Select a bunch of nodes and created a backdrop. All right. Now, you may actually want to reproduce that and create a backdrop. Now, you could start mucking around and go, oh, it's a backdrop node, so I do a nuke, you know, do a x is, oops, nuke, nuke dot create node, and it's a backdrop node, so backdrop node, you can guess at this one. Uh, I have a lot of floating windows, so I want to do in panel equals false. All right, maybe that's it, but suddenly you'll just get this guy. Right. That's not quite what you wanted, because you actually want to make a backdrop node around all the nodes. Right, it's not actually doing what you expect. Slide aside, by the way, if you hadn't noticed, wherever you click your mouse last, so I'm gonna click it top right corner, is where it'll create nodes if you do them in the script edits like this. So it's uh, it's something that it's you'll you'll have noticed it by now, but just sort of thought I'd say it out loud. Now, what I mentioned earlier about echoing Python commands, bring up your preferences, go down to the script editor, and make sure this is ticked. All right. Now this is going to create a lot of additional spam here, so I'll close it out. And we're going to create a backdrop now. You'll notice that here we actually see what code is being run. It's nukescripts.auto backdrop. This applies to, for example, on the grade. Uh, I have this button here which does stuff. So if I click it, it's going to just say hello to the console. Uh, sorry, hello is a message dialog box. But it's also telling me what code it ran. Now I'll just manage the user knobs on it. This is just a Python script button where I actually just have this script running. So you can see it's going to start being very chatty. Now that can be a bit of a pain if you're doing a lot of work, but it's also awesome because it's exactly what's going on. Now this nuke scripts auto backdrop, if you see it's coming out of nuke or nuke scripts, it's something that comes shipped with nuke. You can potentially do the thing I used to do, which was go into the installation copy of nuke, find the relevant things and sort of hunt around. Or you could be clever and do this. Go to the website and check out some docs. So I'll show you where they are. If you go to learn, and also it's not as scary as it looks. So for under Nuke, we have tutorials and docs. Let's go to docs. I'm just gonna go to the old 12.2 stuff. 13 is, um, it looks nicer and it's easy to work with, but 12 is, you know, be, I'll give you the full level of shockingness kind of now. So you'll notice I'm in the developer section. I'm gonna go straight to the reference. Don't worry about the dev guy for now, it's actually kind of cool reading, but we're looking at the reference because we wanna know what the heck's going on. This is what you used to see from, I don't know, Nuke 6 onwards, or even earlier than that. It's, it looks scary, but we can look at this here and go, Nuke scripts auto backdrop is what we had. So let's uh, pop that away. So Nuke scripts auto backdrop. All right, I'm just gonna control C, copy it, bring up the docs again. In this window, control F, new scripts to auto backdrop. And it's right there. So you can click on it and find out what it's doing. So it's a function that comes outside of the new scripts module. It has um, two useful things, uh, some stuff there, but the reason I'm taking us here is because it's showing you how you can find stuff, but also there's this handy dandy source code. Anything in Nuke scripts from memory should be shipped with Nuke and you can actually see how they did it. So if you wanted to, you could copy this and muck around with it and make your own version of the Nuke scripts uh, auto backdrop code. The other thing you can do if you're poking around, and this is in the same theme of getting, getting help for yourself, is I'll just knock this window out. So I've created a backdrop node here, and oops, there you go. So it's a backdrop node. So you may be wondering, let's, uh, let's throw that away. So the backdrop node, you know, when I select it, 
the nodes inside are selected. So if I, you know, I may want to do something with it because I may want to build some software that says, just, you know, get me the backdrop node and wherever they are, go to that backdrop and operate on the nodes inside of it. So we have our reference to our backdrop here. I've just called it X, but give it a, give it a useful name. So there is actually a function that allows you to pick the nodes inside of it. The first time I did this, I actually went and calculated it all, all by hand by getting the width and the height and nodes are inside of it. Um, I probably should have done this. Let's go back to the documentation. Uh, control F because it's a backdrop node. So in the reference, we should be able to find a backdrop node. So you can see that is the nuke backdrop node here. So let's just actually have a look what that tells us. Um, get rid of that yellow highlighting. So there's actually a function that will do this for you. Silly me actually wrote stuff when I could have just done this x dot get nodes. Uh, you know, I could have literally done that. And you can see I've got a list of the grade and the admix. If I bring the viewer up, the viewer is now on the list. If I put a, ooh, geez, you know, if I put a swag load more grades in here, I have a swag load more grades. If I do something and sort of move it outside, so see how they're not selected there? Um, I don't have to worry about any mass or calculation. I just ask it, dear backdrop, what have you got inside yourself? Viewer grade admix. So in general, if you're looking for stuff, definitely hunt through this and just have a look what's there. There's actually a lot of useful information and it, it shouldn't be too scary. Like if you don't understand it, that's fine. It's still no real harm in having a look like what's on a new gizmo. Okay, so you can get the gizmo file name. Wait, gizmo file name? Right, so if you've ever wanted to know where the hell your facility stores that copy of the gizmo, this is what you wanna run. All right, there's a lot of cool, needy things like that. There's other stuff that will confuse the heck out of you. So when you look at animation curves and the uh, roto paint node, but again, the documentation's there to help. It's there as a reference. If it doesn't make sense, it's fine because it's better than not even being aware it's there. So related to that in the self-service category, that's the documentation API reference. You also have some handy dandy stuff in Python. So in Python, uh, let's let's use the backdrop node. I, I won't change it too much. So the Nuke script editor itself is actually pretty awesome because you can do stuff like this. I've just pressed the dot button and I'm pressing tab. It's got tab completion. So you can actually scroll through and eyeball anything that's, that's public. Tab completion also works. Like we know there's a function on this called, um, what was it called? Uh, get nodes, right? So you can just type in G, hit tab. And hey, there's get nodes and get num knobs. So it will be really handy. Um, if you've watched me move, that's probably what you're just going, how does he do, do that? I don't type as fast as it looks. I just use tab a lot. So I happen to know get nodes means tab and do stuff like uh, get nodes. All right, so I can ah, get nodes and then type the rest of the stuff in. So I can execute that function. Now, the other thing, and this is not uh, specific to Nuke, is the help command. If you've come from a Maya Mel perspective, you'll probably remember some of this stuff, but also in Python in general, just run help. All right, help is a function. You can actually see it's telling you what you can do. So you can, oh, sorry, what the function is. So get nodes is the function, it will, give you a list of nodes contained within the backdrop. So let's uh, let's look at the help on nuke create node. Help. Right, so what can you do? Well, it creates a node of the specified type and adds it to the DAG, the directed acyclic graph. Uh, you can give it a number of parameters, node, args, and in panel. So the node class, for example, blur, um, you can give it a string containing a TCL list of name value pairs. That probably doesn't mean a huge amount of, if you haven't played with TCL, but suffice to say, um, let's use a blur. So I've set my blur to a size of 10.8. If we, uh, everyone knows you can do this. So, oh, right, I'm a nuke 
you can see. Right, so if you had a normal regular copy of Nuke, you would actually see in the script the TCL or the values that make that up, which is what they're referring to with this TCL list of name value pairs. Um, they happen to be knob, so might as well just do it. Help blur, blur, and you can do a list of name value pairs. So um, it's called size, size 10.8. All right. And also because I have stuff everywhere, you'll notice I use this in panel flag, in panel equals false, because I have a lot of floating windows and a lock properties bin. I don't want these guys everywhere. So blur two was the one created. Blur two has a size of 10.8. So that's another way to get useful information. The help command is super handy. If you're working with um, a good TD or someone who's made a whole bunch of stuff, they will be sometimes annoyingly verbose, but they will provide lots of information in the function because if they're anything like me, you write it a lot of documentation there because you expect that in the near future, you'll be stressed, tired, hungry, bored, or just forgetful, and you don't want to have to look at the source code or the reference documentation. You just want to you know, have it laid out for you. Um, so yeah, that's a short take through some of the random bits and pieces. Um, hopefully that's useful. And I'm just gonna go check on my Brussels sprouts. The fire alarm hasn't gone off, so I, I think we're okay.